everybody, Ashley here with HearthookHome.com, and today we are going to work up a child size of my adorable little llama dusting mitt. Note that the child size of this pattern is just too small to fit the face on there, so all we're going to be doing for the child size is the armband here, and then we're going to be crocheting the fur, and then we are going to close it up like this. So there will not be a face on the child size. This is literally just single crochet, so I don't think it should be too difficult. This fur stitch can take a minute to get um, um, acquainted with so we'll do all of that together isn't it adorable I love it this is a free pattern on the heart hook home blog let's gather our materials we are going to be using dishy cotton this is hundred percent cotton it's my favorite cotton I love it we're actually using the mint colorway which is going to be beautiful and we also need a G size four millimeter crochet hook and a stitch marker so let's get started here I have crocheted the single crochet back loop only cuff. So all we've done is we've done single crochets in the back loop only of each of these rows for a total of 24 rows. Now that we have that completed, we are ready to start on the actual body of the mitt itself. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to chain one and we're going to half double crochet in the end, that row end right there. Half double crochet. Now, throughout this mitt, this child size mitt is only a total of 15 rows tall, so that's exciting, right? But we're going to mark the first stitch of each row right here because we wanna make sure that we can find it when we come back through. So I'm gonna mark that stitch. Now I need to have, we have 24 rows of single crochet here, so I need to have 24 half double crochets that go along the top. So I'm going to place one half double crochet in each row end across the entire piece. So I'm going to go, since I went into this one here, which is the base of that stitch, I'm going to go into the side of this one right here, and then the base of that one, the side of that one, and the base of that one, etc., all the way till I get to the end. That should leave me with 24 stitches. So I'm just gonna go into the side of this guy right here and do my half double crochet. Bottom of this one right here, side of the next one bottom of this one those these are easier to find because you can see those big holes there right so there is our 24 half double crochets that are going across the top or the row ends from the band that we crocheted earlier isn't that nice? Looks nice and pretty. Okay, so now we start, this is technically row one, and now we're gonna start going back the opposite direction. So it's kind of like a typewriter. We go this way, and then we come back, and then we go this way, and then we come back, and then we go this way, and we come back. So an old fashioned typewriter, right? As you can see in the half double crochet, there's this bar that kind of slants across the, the front of them. Those are the bars that we're going to be using to go backwards. So the first thing that we're going to do for row one A, is we're going to chain one. We're going to find that horizontal bar from the last half double crochet we made and we're going to insert our hook like this. And then we're going to make a single crochet and then we're going to chain four. Now we're gonna turn it so that we're looking at it the opposite direction. It makes it a lot easier to stick your hook in where it needs to go. So the next stitch that we have is this one right here. Now I'm going to pull up a loop or make a single crochet in that slanted uh, loop from that half double crochet. So I'm gonna make a single crochet in here and chain four. Now I'm gonna find the next one and make a single crochet in here and chain four. I'm gonna find the next one, make a single crochet right here and chain four. I'm gonna do this all the way until we get back to our stitch marker that marks the first stitch of that row. Now that I've made it all the way back to the end, I've only got this one half double crochet remaining, and we know that because we marked it with our stitch, right? So we're just going to place one single crochet in that slanted stitch 
or the slanted portion of that stitch right here. So we're going to do a single crochet here. And now we're going to slip stitch to the top of that half double crochet. And this is why we have the stitch marker there because it makes it so much easier to find. So insert your hook here and we're just going to slip stitch to the top of that guy. Just like this. Remove your stitch marker. So now you should since we had 24 half double crochets going across the top of this piece, now you should have all of those chain loops going back across, right? So we ended with our single crochet in this last one. Now for row two, we are going to chain one. We're going to skip that first stitch. And we're do you need to pay attention while you're crocheting these row two, three, and four, because some of them will start in the first stitch and some of them will start in the next stitch. And we did that, I did that, because um, if you always start in the same stitch, it starts to go all this direction or it starts to go all this direction. So we are alternating whether we start in the very first stitch or we skip one and go in the next. So for row two, we are going to skip that very very first stitch. This one right here, we're going to skip that and we're going to go into this one first. So I chained one. I'm going to do a half double crochet in the second stitch and I'm going to mark that before I go any farther. And I'm going to do half double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end. Since we skipped that first one over here, we're going to put two in the end over here so that we still have our 24 half double crochets. So here's my last one. I'm going to put 23 and 24 in that last stitch. So that's number 23 and this is number 24. And now that we've done that, we've done our half double crochet back down the row. Now we're ready to do our fur the same way we did this one, just going all the way back to the beginning. Same thing. Chain one. For the first one, I keep it this orientated this way because I want to be able to get into this one. If you turn it and then you try to get into that horizontal, it's just hard to do. So um, go into that first slanted loop, do your chain four. Nice. Now we're going to rotate it and now we're just going to go boop, 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 all the way to the beginning of the row. Okay, I'm at the end of row 2A and placing my last single crochet in the last horizontal bar of the final or first, depending on how you look at it, half double crochet. Now we're going to slip stitch to the top and this is, remember, why we put the stitch marker there because it's so much easier to see. So slip stitch to that bad guy pop out your stitch marker and now we are ready to do row three. So these are two rows of the fur and the more you get the more dense it feels and the more um, midi it feels I guess if that's a word. <laughs> so with row three we're going to chain one. With row three we are going to skip that first stitch and we're going to half double crochet in the next. So skip where it came out of and just go into that very next one right there. Make sure you mark that stitch before continuing on. And row three is worked exactly like row two. So I'm just going to go half double crochet um, forward and then do my first stitches all the way back and then we will start row four together. Okay, I have made it all the way back with my third row. If you need, um, I mean, you can see that we've got one, two, three rows, but if you need to count it a little bit more um, definitively, just turn it over and you can see that you've got one V here, which is row one, the second one here, and the third one here. So we can see that we've done three rows of the half double crochet fur bit, right? So now we're ready to start on row four. And this is the one that's a little bit different than the previous rows where we chain one and we do not skip this first stitch. We're going to go and place our first half double crochet right into that very first one right there, the same one where you slip stitched a second ago. So go ahead and put that first half double crochet in there mark it as always and then just go ahead and do your 24 total half double crochets to the end of the row that means you're not going to place two extra or the two in the last one since you started at the very um, first stitch on the right side right so just go until you've got 24 half double crochets and then do the same thing with the fur bit all the way back to the end of the row then for this size we are going to repeat the rows that we just did we're going to repeat rows two three four two three four until we get to row 
13. So I'm going to continue adding fur in this exact same manner. So either you skip one for rows two and three, and then row four, you do not skip one. And so I'm going to meet back up with you when I have 13 total rows of this cute little fur, right? This is really isn't too bad. Once you get the hang of where to place your hook to make the fur stitches, it really isn't too bad. And it's got this cool, just funky feel to it. So I will meet up with you here in sh a short little while. So there we have my last row of the fur, right? So this is the flat portion. Let's turn it over and look at the back. You can see that by offsetting these stitches every few rows that it keeps it mostly straight. Trust me, my first attempt was more like this and my second attempt was completely the opposite direction. So, so offsetting them like this keeps it nice and straight. Now what we're going to do is we're ready to close it up and to just close up the top here. So what we're going to do where we are still attached at the end of round 13 or row 13, we are just going to slip stitch to the top of the last half double crochet. So I'm just gonna slip stitch to that right here. Pull that nice and tight. Now we are going to work in rounds for the rest of the pattern. So what we're going to do for round or for row 14, we're gonna chain one and turn. We are going to half double crochet two together all the way around. So now we have 24 and we have had 24 half double crochets this whole time. So this round we're only going to have 12 because we're cutting it in half. So we're going to half double crochet using that first one together. We're crocheting two together. I am going to mark this first stitch. And now we're going to continue doing our decreases all the way around. So in the next two stitches, we're going to do a decrease here. So I need one more decrease for the row. Okay, so now I have 12 half double crochet two together all the way around. What we're going to do is join to the first where I have my stitch marker here. I'm just going to go in that same spot there and join. If I can get it in. There we go. Okay, I'll join that. I am going to leave that stitch marker there just because I want to make sure that I'm, you know, when I go around with my fur that it is correctly placed. So I'm going to chain one. I am going to do the fur all the way around in these decreases that I just made. So the first one, I'm just gonna go in this horizontal bar right here. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna rotate at it like we have been the whole time. Find that next horizontal bar and that next half double crochet right here and do this all the way around. Find that this is the first one that we made, so I'm going to place my last single crochet right into that one. Looks good. Remove that stitch marker. Okay, I'm going to slip stitch just to the top somewhere where that stitch marker was or around where that stitch marker was. And now we're going to do one more round of decreases so that we close this up as small as we can make it. So I'm going to, we have 12 stitches here. So I'm going to chain one and I'm just going to do the uh, half double crochet two together all the way around. I am going to mark that first stitch again. It's nice to know exactly where that is and not have to question it. And so two, chain one and we're going to do our six little single crochet fur pieces all the way around. I have noticed that with the adult size this portion is a lot easier because we are not um, doing our decreases down to only six stitches. It's a little bit bigger obviously for bigger hands. So this one's a little bit trickier than the adult. If you're doing the adult you'll find this portion just a tad bit easier. 
All right, so I have finished with all of my fur stitches, hallelujah, right? So now all we have to do is just sew these ends up. Trust me, I tried to do this in the round and it was an absolute nightmare. So seaming it really is your best option here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I pull enough yarn from my source that I can easily fasten off. So I'm gonna pull this yarn through my ending tail. I'm going to pull it nice and tight. So now we fastened off. Now I'm going to thread my yarn needle and then we're going to cinch up these holes up here. So I'm going to take where I fastened off and go to the opposite side and pull that through there. Nice. And then I'm going to come over to this side and do this side. Let's pull those through before we Go any further because it can be kind of difficult. You don't want to go through too many loops and then have to pull them through all of them at the same time. So looks like we're about cinched up. To be honest, that fur really hides a lot of your imperfections too, which hallelujah, right? So I'm just going to kind of cinch these up a little bit, go through this side, come up over here somewhere, and now I am ready to sew up end for end. Now with the adult size, I did flip it out like this. Um, I think that technically that would work for the kid's size, but this is so much smaller that popping it back inside out after you've sewn it is going to be a pain. So I'm just going to kind of feed my yarn down here to the base of the last row that was not connected, so row 13. We're gonna just kind of feed it down there. And seriously, since all this fur is here, you cannot even see any of these weaving in bits. So do not stress out about weaving this in or sewing it perfectly because even once we get this sewn together, it's going to be um, pretty much not even noticeable. One thing that I do recommend is keeping, making sure that these ends are constantly um, the right so that when you get down, if you're sewing here and you get down, you don't want it to be like this and be like, oh my gosh, you know, these don't even line up. So kind of make sure that these stay together. You could put a stitch marker here if you want or here. Um, kind of makes it hard to get in here and sew these ends together. But that's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna pull one from the other. And you do not have to do a pretty sew job here, guys. Now when we get down to where the single crochet band is, we're going to make sure that those stitches line up. So stitch for stitch, doo, 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 all the way. And we're just gonna start sewing these together as well. And this one I'm just whip stitching where you just go around both pieces, just around and around and around. I mean, let's be honest, it's a dusting mitt or a bath mitt. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Of course, we always strive for perfection, right? 99% perfection is impossible. I'm gonna keep whip stitching these together until I reach all the way to the end. Ta-da! Here we have the cutest little tiny child size of our little llama dusting mitt. So here's mama and here's the baby. Like I said, there's just not enough room to make a face on here. If you want to, to try, I mean, good luck, my friend. But um, yeah, you could put some little ears on there. That would be really cute. You could put some eyes on there even. If it's just going to be for playtime, you could put little safety eyes on there if you wanted to. Um, kind of make him a little face. But isn't he adorable? I just love it. I love this pattern and thank you so much for crocheting with me. I will talk to you soon.